Another reason people sometimes don't want to forgive is that they believe that they get value from their anger, their sadness, their pain, and the opportunities that these give them to play the victim. Anger, sadness and pain can be a way of bonding with others in social groups or in online social networks. We may have created a sense of belonging based on our shared suffering. We could be relating to others through sharing our experiences of being a victim. It can be to our benefit to be part of a mutual support group if we later allow ourselves to move on when the time comes to move on. However, in order to move on, we ultimately need to learn to forgive and to let go of the past. Anger can sometimes be useful as fuel to help us fight an injustice or make a change in our lives. We can get away with that in the short term, but in the long term, living off anger can be toxic and bad for psychological and physical health. If you're someone who sees anger as a useful medicine for some situations, bear in mind that too much of any medicine becomes a poison. Anger, pain, sadness and so on are all forms of suffering. If we believe that certain changes need to be made in society and we want to be a part of making those changes happen, we can do this without needing to stay in our suffering, without needing to stay in the unforgiving state which supports that suffering. We can do this by aligning with and joining with those groups and individuals who have gone beyond blame. We can join with those who have a positive vision for humanity and those who have a positive regard for their fellow human beings. We can belong to those groups who are out to assist in the unfolding of human potential by focusing on the development of what is best for everyone. Holding on to anger is sometimes a defence against sadness. Holding on to sadness is sometimes a defence against anger. Some people are more comfortable staying in their anger and don't want to deal with the sad, vulnerable parts of themselves. They use their anger as a way of keeping the sadness at bay and disassociating themselves from their vulnerabilities. Other people are more comfortable staying in their sadness and don't want to deal with the angry, aggressive parts of themselves. They use their sadness to keep their anger at bay. They don't want to accept their anger as it does not fit in with who they think they are. We may feel empowered playing the angry victim rather than playing the sad victim, but we're still playing the victim. Any form of playing the victim is not playing out the best within ourselves. It is not doing justice to our true potential to grow into wise, effective and loving human beings. Also, the aggressive defence we use while playing the part of an angry victim is often experienced as an attack by those we believe we are defending ourselves against. This can often escalate the situation and make those who oppose us even more entrenched in their position. Part of this issue of holding on to the past is that people sometimes all done to pain as a reminder. They use pain like a fridge magnet, you know, like one of those magnets you put on your fridge with a note under it to remind you of something. The pain acts as a reminder. Don't do that again. We might be using the pain from the past to act as a reminder to prevent us repeating the same mistakes. This can make us reluctant to let go of that pain as we see it as useful. However, holding on to a pain is a form of self-punishment and it can easily become toxic. It is difficult to have a reconciliation and create a good relationship with someone who keeps hurting us. This is true even if we are the person who keeps hurting us. It is difficult to have a good relationship with ourselves while we keep hurting ourselves by holding on to all pains and all painful situations. In other words, self-punishment damages our relationship with ourselves. It cripples us internally as it damages the relationship between the different parts of ourselves and it lessens our capacity to lead a useful, productive and meaningful life. Self-punishment weakens us and thereby gives us even more to judge and blame ourselves for. It can also cause an acute and intense form of loneliness because we have not much feeling of friendship and kindness towards ourselves. When we are not a friend to ourselves, we become deeply lonely. We miss the person who could have been our best and closest friend, 
blame the others. When we are not a friend to ourselves, we cannot feel for ourselves. When we cannot feel for ourselves, we reduce our capacity to feel for others too. And the resulting sense of isolation can cause us to develop addictions or compulsions, which makes it even more likely we will do things which we'll end up feeling guilty or ashamed about. On the other hand, self-forgiveness and also forgiveness of others empowers the best on us and enables us to create a healthy feeling of self-encouragement. Forgiveness enables us to recreate and rebuild our lives in healthy life in enhancing ways. For example, we all usually have an internal commentary going on from our inner critic, assessing and judging us, usually negatively, and sometimes reminding us of things we did wrong in the past. Forgiveness transforms our inner critic into a best friend. Whether we forgive ourselves or we forgive others, this gradually causes our inner critic to transform into a wise guide or kindly parent. The more we practice forgiveness, the more positive our inner self-talk becomes. Punishing ourselves for mistakes we made in the past does not serve us, nor does it serve anyone. Our self-negating attitude renders us unable to offer much. I like to say that self-forgiveness is one of the most unselfish things you can do, because by self-forgiveness you allow more good into your life and then you've got much more good to share with others. We need to forgive, including forgiving ourselves, so that we can let go of the past. We can then grow in wisdom, insight and compassion as we gain them from our experiences rather than the bitterness and resentment that comes from not forgiving. Forgiveness is also what does the most ensure that we don't repeat the mistakes of the past.